This is my telescope. It's worth $5,000. And in today's video, I'm gonna be pointing my telescope setup at a random area of the night sky and seeing what I can discover. I might discover something, I might not even see anything at all, but that's what the point of this video is. I've never done this before. I've only been taking pictures of nebulae and galaxies that have already been discovered. But this time around, I'm just gonna point my telescope at something completely random and we're gonna see what we can discover here. I'm really eager to see what undiscovered objects still lie in space in the observable universe so we're going to see if we can find anything in today's video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Astro Tan, and I take pictures of space from my backyard. So let's hop into it. So sick, so sick, so sick of love. So, sick of love. so yeah. I've never done this before. It's a pretty wild idea, but I want to challenge myself. It started roughly around two to 300 years ago when people started naming objects in space. Sure, we didn't know what these things were, but we started to figure out where they actually were in the night sky. Take for example, the Andromeda galaxy, which many people observed over this long period of time. And some people thought that it was a nebula, a planet, but later as technology got better, we discovered that it was actually a giant galaxy. It's one of the most popular galaxies photographed by astrophotographers, but the point is it is one of the biggest and most famous named space objects. Another example is the famous Great Orion Nebula, which is a winter nebula target that's one of the brightest targets to photograph in the northern hemisphere. Because these objects are named and you know the location and all the info behind them, that makes it easy for them to find. And once you find them, it's not that hard from there to get the picture of it. The problem with pointing your telescope at a random area of the sky is that even though probably most of those stars are cataloged because we catalog a lot of the stars over time for scientific purposes, we still might not find out a lot of the nebulae or things that might be hidden in that picture. Sure, we might not discover anything in this video, but why not give it a shot? Birds are helping with the cicada outbreak, aren't they? This bird just literally picked up a cicada off the ground and started eating it. That's crazy. Cicadas are getting out of hand, guys. These things have been crawling around absolutely everywhere. The cicada outbreak in the United States is crazy, but these things don't go on my setup. It's finally summer here in the backyard, and that makes things a little bit easier for this challenge that I'm going to be putting to myself. In summer, the Milky Way is almost all over the sky throughout the entire night, and there's a ton of great targets to observe and photograph during this time. Over this time, too, there's a ton of things that you could just take pictures of without any name to it. That's exactly what I'm going to be doing tonight, and I'm going to be focusing on part of the Cygnus constellation because there's a lot of nebulae and cool stuff going on there, but some of it is not identified or cataloged. Of course, of course, of course, this shot is probably not gonna be so easy, and let's go over why. First off, I live in an area where there's a lot of light pollution, which means I don't have a lot of access to dark skies around here. I can barely see a lot of stars in the night sky compared to a lot of dark sky locations, and I'm really eager to go back out into those dark skies because it makes things a lot easier for astrophotographers. With a dark sky, you don't have to worry about not seeing as many stars or objects in the night sky because there's not a lot of that light interfering with you. When you take an image of, let's say, the sky at night with a telescope in a light polluted area, you're gonna see a lot of white because it's gonna be washed out from all those lights in those skies. Whereas in a dark sky, you're gonna see a lot of those stars and a lot of a spacey background because there's not any lights interfering with it. So sadly, where I live, there's a lot of lights going around, but there is one thing that I can use that really helps take care of this. And this is a really important thing for any setup for any light polluted area. This is a narrow band filter. Specifically the Optolong L Enhance and it's one of my favorite things of my setup. It helps me get rid of all of the light pollution by letting a certain bandwidth of light pass through my camera and telescope setup so that way it gets rid of all of the stray lights and the moonlight that I don't need. Now this filter lets in red and blue light, specifically hydrogen alpha and oxygen 3 if you're talking about real space nerdy terms. Because I'm shooting this random area of the sky in the constellation of Cygnus, I might have a chance of grabbing some of that red light because everywhere in Cygnus, there's a ton of red light. So I might have a decent shot at seeing what I can capture with some red light in there. Hopefully I'll get a little bizzazz to my image. But who knows, that's why we're testing it. Ooh. Oh, it's hot. Diving more into my setup, you'll probably be interested in the telescope on here. This is the SV Boney 80mm ED Doublet Refractor Telescope. And in short terms, that is just a telescope that's designed for astrophotography. It specializes in minimizing stars that regular visual telescopes wouldn't be able to capture well and make sure my images are sharp for astrophotography editing later on. So it's a perfect telescope for basically getting an image of space. And if you guys wanna look at more into that telescope, I'll be doing a review on it soon 
and I'll link it in the description for you guys to take a look at. Its focal length is 448 millimeters, so that's pretty wide. We're gonna see a lot of space in one picture, but that's okay because I kind of want that. That telescope is mounted on a specialized tripod for tracking the stars and making sure that my long exposure images are tack sharp with no star trails, and that is the Ioptron GEM28. A long time ago, my old one broke, but thankfully I got a new one two years ago and it's been absolutely flawless works through winter this thing is designed to be out here and I think it took it out on a negative 10 degree night and that was not a good idea but everything held up it was all cool so we're all chilling over here you might be wondering what the weird thing on the back of my telescope is why is it red and where is the screen wouldn't you think there's like an iPhone or a DSLR camera on there well that's where things get a little weird this is actually one of the most important things in my entire setup and that is a dedicated astronomy camera I'm gonna need this for a crucial part of my test tonight to see what I can really capture in a random patch of the sky. Normal cameras like, like the phone you're watching this video on, your tablet, or even a DSLR camera have one problem in common and it's really not a good one. These cameras are not really great at capturing that red light that we want to see in our images. So basically the red space dust, it kind of doesn't really show it that well. So the solution to this is buying a camera specialized for astrophotography. It has a few other hidden features, but I guess the main thing is that it really captures red light well. If you want to dive even further into this, it has a fan on the back of the camera. Yeah, while that looks pretty weird, it's also a really important thing, and I'm really glad I have it. Even though this fan on the back of this camera might sound like a wind turbine in the middle of the night, it does its job perfectly and can cool this camera down to negative temperatures. Isn't that insane? Reason for this is to make sure that instead of having a grainy image of space, we want to have a sharp and smooth image of space that we can later enhance later when we process our images. It's a really crucial thing and I'm really glad that I have it I used it to take pictures of other things as well it doesn't have to be a astronomy camera but that's just what it specializes in if you have a telescope you can still use this to observe planets the moon or even things in the daytime I've done that a couple times and it works perfectly fine it's basically just a camera no screen no lens and just a giant fan on the back but hey it's perfect for that, isn't it? So earlier a couple weeks ago, I took a picture of the star Seder in the Cygnus constellation. It's packed with a bunch of crazy nebula details and everything that you would really imagine for an astrophotographer. So for this test, I'm looking close to that region. I'm gonna just move it a little bit up and see if there's any weird, interesting things going on in that area. Because most astrophotographers like to shoot at the main targets, so I'm gonna do something a little different and see if there's really anything going on there. I'm hoping to expect some red nebula in there and hopefully a lot of cool star colors but in a light polluted area like this it's kind of hard to get a lot of natural star colors because you have to use a filter. I've been eager to go back to dark skies and I'm super sad I missed out on the Cherry Spring Star Party this year. We weren't able to get tickets and the weather didn't look great so I decided to not go this year but I'm hoping to come back next year. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to be doing some dark sky trips this summer though. I'm planning on going to the lake house a lot and there's going to be a, hopefully some videos coming up on that. It's a Bortle 4 site and I'm really glad because I don't really have a close access to dark skies around here where I live so a two hour drive to a dark sky that's way darker than this sky where I don't have to use any filters to fight light pollution is a dream for me. Next month I also believe we're planning a trip to Headlands which is a international dark sky park where I can hopefully take my dude over there and all the stuff so I can take some decent pictures of the night sky, but I have no idea what to shoot yet. I'm hoping that it's clear because you can't really see until like a few days earlier, so we're just gonna have to pray that everything works out in the end, but there's also a lot of stuff over there like Mackinac City, so it's gonna be a little mini astrophotography vacation. One thing I also wanna do is move out west because wow, I mean, the skies are crazy there. I mean, hopefully I could just see those skies once again. Long before time began, Tanner over here did not have this camera, did not have his setup, did not have anything except a cheap little visual telescope. I took that thing on our Western trip a few years ago to Bryce Canyon National Park, and it's one of the darkest places in the entire country. Now, I didn't really know this at the time, so I was kind of surprised. I was like, wow, I mean, let's see how dark these skies really are. So we drive there and boom. The most stars that I've ever seen in my entire life, I was losing my sh So I saw these stars and I thought I saw clouds, but it was just the Milky Way rising over the entire sky and I was just awe-inspired. I took my telescope out, which was absolutely terrible at the time, and I was trying to get pictures off of my phone, but 
things were not working out well. But it was then after that dark sky trip that I knew that I wanted to start taking pictures more and more and more. I began to invest in money and time and I got a my first camera, Canon Rebel T7, which is long gone now, replaced with this camera that I'm filming on. But that's when I knew that I wanted to keep doing this stuff. So if you guys have never seen dark skies, it is an important thing for you guys to see in your life because I believe that 25, 50 years from now, they're gonna be a lot harder to find except for in the ocean, but you can't do astrophotography in the ocean. And it's kind of just a sad reality, you know? I mean, obviously more houses will be popping up, more neighborhoods, towns, and just the skies will be getting brighter and brighter and brighter. And even though we have filters for this, nothing makes up for the true darkness where you could just stare up at the sky and look at the stars again. It's these shooting stars, meteors, everything. It's a dream for us astrophotographers. Well, let's go teleport to nighttime. Three, two, one. Whoa, how about that transition, huh? Well, it is currently two in the morning and of course I'm staying up here really late, early in the morning with no right to be out here. I seriously need to go to bed, but let me get a few words out. We're up and running on our setup right now. Skies are looking great. They weren't clear earlier, so we're out here late at in the morning to finally take a look at things. I think I'm gonna spend a couple more nights on this because I really think it's gonna need it and if I discover something, then maybe I'll need a couple more nights of exposure to really bring it out. It almost feels weird that all the summer constellations are out and I can't really see anything. It's just really odd because in the summer, the Milky Way is always out, but just when you're in a light polluted area, things just really take a turn for you. But then again, like I said, the Optolong L Enhance comes in clutch once again, once more, and, and thanks to that guy, my images are going to be pretty solid. Yeah, I mean, I'm just looking at it right now and it's, I don't know, I mean... I don't know, I just wish it was darker. I got a friend, Orion Astro, who images in the heart of a city, Bortle 9, so all respect to him because I live in a suburban neighborhood. Honestly, I don't think I'm going to be capturing any new things in this area of space. I don't think I'm going to be capturing anything groundbreaking, but there's always a chance, so we'll see what we can collect at the end of this video. If you stayed to the end, thank you for watching, and now it's time for the image reveal, and hopefully we'll see some cool stuff going on in this random area of space, and maybe I'll do some more of these. If you guys want to see more videos of me pointing my telescope at random patches of the sky, let me know in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Clear skies.